I'm making this video to kind of prove a point about vinyl. There's another video online that shows how vinyl supposedly has a better frequency response than a compact disc. Now, whether that is true or not isn't the point of this. This point that I'm trying to make is that vinyl is extremely inaccurate at those frequencies. So what I thought I'd do was, was to uh, find an album uh, recorded in, I think this was 1985. And what's important about that is that it was recorded digitally. So it was recorded using the Sony PCM3324 and then digitally mastered using the Sony PCM1610. Now you can go online and look that equipment up and it clearly shows that the digital frequency limitation of those recorders was 20,000 cycles. So there is really no way that an album recorded digitally, no analog tape used, there should be no frequencies above 20,000 hertz. And on a CD, that's probably true. It, it comes down at 21 maybe, uh, you know, wherever the, the limit of that is. But what's really important is what vinyl is going to do to it. Now, it can't make up frequencies, but running the same test that's in the other video, you're going to see the mistracking results at those frequencies. So what I've done is I fed this little zoom recorder the analog output, okay? And this is recording at 96 kilohertz, 24 bit. And it's being fed through a Marantz 4400 vintage. And it's on a linear tracking Pioneer. I think this is the PL1000A. And it's using a fairly good cartridge. That is the Audio-Technica 440 MLA, which if you're gonna argue the CD4 uh, argument with the 50,000 Hertz uh, carrier, this cartridge has been known to be able to successfully play that back. So it's a capable cartridge. It's on a linear tracking turntable, which is known for its accuracy. It's being fed through some pretty decent equipment, not the best, but very, very good for its day. And we're gonna take a look here in a minute and see what we get. So we're back up in my computer. Uh, it's an iMac, sorry, but I've got the uh, card from the Zoom recorder in. It's loaded in Adobe Audition, okay? And we've got the frequency analysis window open. I've even added the little line at 22,000 hertz as to where frequencies should basically just stop because we are talking a digital recording that has no frequencies above that. So let's go ahead. I'm going to play this from, let's say, where the needle hits. And it's, I'm doing this left-handed and holding the camera. So, okay. So right now the needle is on the record. If everybody in the USA could come so what's going on? We could take them to Clearly, the Southwest, where the there shouldn't be any frequency above 22,000. Now there's a touch of But they're in. What you're seeing are the inaccuracies involved in vinyl. It should roll off. It shouldn't even roll off. It should just drop like a brick at 22,000 hertz. But this looks nearly identical to the video that the other guy produced showing his recording, which is an analog recording. That is cartridge mistracking. What's more important is that it really isn't happening above minus 80 dB. Now, if you look at his, his, his results are very similar. Minus 80 dB is almost nothing. Uh, you know, most music recorded these days, unfortunately, the brick wall method puts everything up at zero. 
but usually everything is between 0 and 24 dB. When you get down that low, that is almost a noise floor. In fact, anything really below 50 in the analog world, uh, you're just starting to get into noise. But again, that album should have no frequency above 22,000 hertz. And you just saw what clearly looked like musical content there. But it's not. It is simple cartridge mistracking. Don't get me wrong, I love vinyl, okay? You saw the equipment that I have, I've got both. But I also like the truth from time to time. And it's not really an accurate comparison to say, look here, you see this, this is why vinyl is better. Number one, you can't hear that. And number two, at that level, it's unimportant material. 